Hey everybody, this is Alex from Lavos. Uh, for this podcast, I'm going to be doing a full NBA playoff prediction for every uh, NBA playoff series that's going on. Um, currently, right now, as of um, Saturday, uh, April 20th, the NBA playoffs have started, and already a couple of games have gone through. Every game one series or every game one has been completed. A couple of game twos have been completed as well, and I'm going to be going over my prediction for every playoff series up to the NBA Finals. First off, I'm going to be uh, explaining every uh, one through eighth seed in both conferences and how the playoffs are set up, and then we'll just move on from there. So for the Western Conference, the number one seed, the Oklahoma City Thunder finished with a record 57 and 25. They were the youngest first seed uh they were, or they were the youngest team to manage to get a first seed in their conference in two decades. They finished with the same record as the second seeded Denver Nuggets with 57 wins, but they have the nod because of a 3 and 1 record over Denver. They have a they have a very young team uh led by their MVP finalist Shea Gilgis Alexander who finished the year uh, averaging 31 points a game, as well as a lot, as well as rookie of the year candidate Chet Holmgren, and then some other role players such as Josh Giddy, the Jalen Williams brothers, J Dub and J Will, and Isaiah Joe as well. The second seeded Denver Nuggets, currently the NBA champs. There's not much to talk about them. They're looking to go for a back to back, finishing with a better record over last year when they had 53 wins. They lost out on the first seed in the final two games because of a very crushing loss to the San Antonio Spurs, but they were able to draw a easier first round matchup over uh, besides the Thunder. The, th- the three seed, the Minnesota Timberwolves, finished with with fifty six wins, a fourteen win improvement over last year, which ended up being their second best record in franchise history, arguably, arguably their second best season in franchise history after their 04 season of 58 wins. They have a pretty young team uh, led by uh, superstar flashy uh, forward Anthony Edwards as well as his right hand man center Carl Anthony Towns and then the guys controlling the middle and the perimeter uh, Rudy Gobert controlling the middle and Jaden McDaniels controlling the perimeter. This team uh fought all the way to having the best defensive efficiency in the league with a rating of 108.4 and have used that stingy defense to go up 1-0 against their opponent in the NBA playoffs so far. The number 4 seed is the LA Clippers. Once again, another year where they were favored to win the NBA Finals because of their stacked roster with guys like James Harden, Paul George, and Kawhi Leonard. I mean, with those three guys on the team, you would expect for them to be the, the... favorite to win the finals every year but the closest they've gotten was the western conference finals in 2021 and have since not gone close their playoff opponent the number five seed the dallas mavericks the mavericks don the arguably the best player in the nba besides nikola Jokic, uh luka Doncic, the slovenian he finished the year as the league's leading scorer with just a tad under 34 points per game and his right-hand man, Kyrie Irving, who is an NBA champion, has a lot of finals experience, as well as Luka's uh, multiple years of playoff experience. Uh, they have a nice team around them with um, mid-season acquisitions of P.J. Washington, Daniel Gafford, and then some guys that were are already on the team, like Tim Hardaway Jr. and Dante Exum. They had a tough Game 1 loss against L.A., but looked to rebound. The number 6 seed, the Phoenix Suns, they're... They got some superstars. They got the best scorer in the league, Kevin Durant, as well as probably the best scoring guard in the league besides Steph Curry, uh, Devin Booker. They also have a third option, Bradley Beal, who was on the older end. They just traded for him this year from Washington. He was injured for a lot of the year, but the big three is ready for the playoffs, but they ran into the stingy defense of Minnesota. If they don't win this year, if they don't win the first round, they could possibly be looking at a rebuild. The number seven seed, the LA Lakers with none other than LeBron James and then his right hand man Anthony Davis. Uh, they are trying to avenge a playoff sweep in last year's Western Conference Finals to Denver 
uh, so far it's not looking good. They are already down 2-0 against that same Denver team uh, after a game-winning shot by Jamal Murray last night. The Nuggets are, yeah, the Nuggets have a currently 10-game winning streak against LA going back to last year's uh, conference finals. So it's not looking for not looking good for LA in what could be LeBron's final playoff series. The eighth seed, the New Orleans Pelicans playing against the Thunder. They're shorthanded. Uh, their star superstar power forward Zion Williamson is out with a hamstring strain, which really hurt the team. They only lost by two in Game One, which means they have the power to beat OKC. But the the loss of Zion is a um, is a big hit for them. Moving on to the Eastern Conference. We have the Boston Celtics with the best record in the NBA at 64 wins. Most of that is because they have a pretty stacked roster. You know, guys like Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Chris Stapps, Porzingis, and Drew Holiday. Uh, the latter two were traded for in the offseason, uh, which was a pretty crazy offseason. And then they got a great supporting cast like defensive guard uh, Derek White. And then the old man, Al Horford, still trying to chase his first ring. The team is the t- with their sixty four win season. They have a pretty um, championship or bust year because this is their best chance to uh, grab that title. Uh, even though the West is pretty stacked, they have a very weak East to deal with. Besides, probably the New York Knicks and the Milwaukee Bucks. Speaking of that second seed, the New York Knicks ended up getting the second seed um, after the very last game of the regular season. Finished with fifty wins. They have a very nice team with Jalen Brunson. Uh, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, or the Villanova boys. And then they also got some defensive studs helping them out, like OG Ananobi and Mitchell Robinson. They are missing, super, or not superstar, but star power for Julius Randle, who is now out for the year. But they've honestly done better without him, so it's probably for the good. Uh, the number three seed is a very surprising one, the Milwaukee Bucks. They are coming off a year where they had 58 wins last year, but a very very big upset in the first round against the Miami Heat where they lost as the number one seed only the I'm pretty sure only one of the seventh probably only the seventh team ever seventh first seed ever to lose a playoff the first round series to the eighth seed which um is a very crushing loss but you know Jimmy Butler was just that guy last year for the Miami Heat they had a they had a pretty big decline this year finished with 49 wins despite trading for superstar point guard Damian Lillard. They were 30-13 and 13 at one point in the season, but then fired their head coach Adrian Griffin and hired known choker head coach Doc Rivers, which then propelled them to a 19-20 and 20 finish to end the year. On top of that, superstar and multi-time MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo uh, injured his calf in one of the final games of the year, so they went into the playoffs without him. They won their first. They won the first game of their playoff series, but it, I, I don't know how it's gonna go uh, later on. The number four seed, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, they're in only their second playoff series in the post LeBron era, led by guys like Donovan Mitchell, Jared Allen, the youngster Evan Mobley, and some pretty good shooters like Max Struess and uh, Isaac Okoro. Uh, they are trying to avenge their first round loss over the Knicks last year when they lost the series four games to one in the first round and have a pretty good chance of doing so against their uh against the number five seed opponent the orlando magic the magic have had arguably their best season since uh, 2010 finishing with 48 wins and yes they, they finished the year with the third best defensive efficiency but they have one of the more worst offenses in the league so they're not able to uh, turn those defensive stops into um, into points. And it showed in the first two games. They haven't even put up 90 points against the Cavs yet. They're down 2 nothing to the Cavs, so it's not looking too good. Sixth seed, the Indiana Pacers. They have one of the best guards in the league, Tyrese Halliburton, who led the league with uh, just a tad under 11 assists per game. The Pacers, as a team, Uh, led the league in points per game at 123.3 as well as field goal percentage at 50.7 meaning they hit over half of their shots every single game which is insane efficiency Tyrese Halliburton is um, alongside uh, Miles Turner and then newly trade acquisition midseason Pascal Siakam from the Toronto Raptors 
pretty nice team. Hoping um, this series against Milwaukee is pretty nice. The seventh seed of the East, the Philadelphia 76ers, they were one of the top four seeds earlier on in the year, but with an injury to uh, center Joel Embiid where he missed quite a bit of time, they kind of fell off quite a bit. But once he came back, they finished the year on a uh, seven uh, on an eight game win streak, along with their play in win over. Uh, oh, sorry, along with their play in win over the Miami Heat. Uh, Joel Embiid once again reaggravated the injury, which is a, a left knee. He reaggravated it in game one against the New York Knicks, but has since come back into play and even played game two yesterday as well in a very close loss. And B, the rating MVP, looking to get back into form with uh, his right-hand man, Tyrese Maxey. But um, with how good the Knicks have been playing, it's not looking too good. And then the eighth seed, playing against the Boston Celtics, the Miami Heat, a rematch of the last two Eastern Conference Finals. Boston took the one in 2022, and Miami took the one last year. They also met in the 2020 Conference Finals in the bubble, the one which Miami took. So Miami's got a 2-1 to one advantage in conference finals against Boston. The two meet the two teams meet in the first round this year. Um with Jimmy Butler not playing due to a uh injury, it's likely Boston could take the sweep on here. Now for the actual predictions, I'm going to try to go through quick with this just to um not bore anyone out. So, the first for the I'm going to do Western Conference first and Eastern the 1-8 matchup, Oklahoma City Thunder versus New Orleans, New Orleans Pelicans. I'm going to take the Thunder in this one. Yes, they may be a very young team with no playoff experience besides uh, MVP final Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Um, but they're a very good team. Yes, they had a very close loss and a very close win in Game 1, but just two points without Zion, with the Pelicans not having Zion. But, you know, I, I think they're going to win the series. I'm going to take them in five games. New Orleans will definitely take either games three or four. Uh, it could be a six-game series, but I'm going to take the Thunder in five. Now on to the two-seven matchup: the Nuggets, the Denver Nuggets versus the LA Lakers. Denver's up two nothing. I got them in a sweep, clean sweep. Same thing as last year. Um, the uh, Lakers have are, are a little bit better this year. Uh, D'Angelo Russell had a very rough game one, but bounced back in game two with seven three pointers. But a late Jamal Murray shot ended up winning the game at the buzzer for Denver after a 20-point comeback. Uh, the Lakers were pretty gassed out in Game 2 because of the altitude in Denver, which makes sense. That's their advantage. That's the Nuggets' advantage. But I got I got Denver in a clean sweep here. For the Timberwolves versus Suns matchup, I feel like this is going to be a close series. So I'm going to take the Timberwolves in six games. I got... I got Minnesota winning today, and then um, Phoenix winning their two home games, and then Minnesota takes the last two. I just think their defense is too overpowered, um, even against very good scorers on the Suns, because they got because obviously they have Devin Booker, they have Kevin Durant, but they also have the league's leader in three point percentage, Grayson Allen, at forty six point one percent on not that many shot threes, but it's insane efficiency. So I got Minnesota in six there. For the uh, LA Clippers Dallas Mavericks series, I got Dallas in this one. Yes, they had a very rough game one in LA, but you know Luka Luka Doncic is known to make uh, bounce backs. Um, in his uh, Western Conference Finals run in 2022, the team lost game one in every single series, but. In the first two, they lost game one to Utah at home. Ended up winning that series in six. They lost game one in Phoenix to a 64-win Phoenix Suns team. Ended up winning that series, winning game seven on their home floor after both teams, after the home team won every single game in that series before game seven. So I got the I got Dallas going out. I got Dallas taking the series in five in six games, six games for sure. Now on to the Eastern Conference. The Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat. It, it's I'm, I'm sorry, but I got a clean sweep here. With Jimmy Butler not playing, in my opinion, the Heat don't really have a chance. They really don't have a chance. So I'm going to take a clean sweep here. Uh, the 2-7 New York Knicks versus Philadelphia 76ers. I'm going to take New York in five games. Um, 
I feel like Philly will take a game at home, but ultimately it's, it's going to be a very quick series. For the Milwaukee Bucks versus Indiana Pacers, 3-6 matchup, I got an upset here. I'm going to take Indiana in six games. Yes, they lost game one, but with Giannis Antetokounmpo not playing for the Bucks, they're really going to miss him. So uh, I'm definitely going to take uh, Indiana on this one with uh, in six games. Then the 4-5, the Magic and the Cavs. I thought this was going to be a close series. I thought it, I thought it was going to go to at least six games, but with how the Magic have been playing on, off- on offense in the first two games, I'm going to take Cleveland in four games. I'm going to take Cleveland in a clean sweep, mainly because it just doesn't seem like Orlando has a lot of offensive firepower outside of uh, last year's Rookie of the Year and this year's All-Star uh, Paulo Banquero. You know, obviously, he's got some nice guys around him like Franz Wagner and Jalen Suggs, but ultimately... When you put up less than 90 points in your first two playoff games in this offensive era, you, you're not going to really win a lot of basketball games. Now on for the second seed. Or sorry, the second round. We have the 1-5. It's a 1-5 matchup. Oklahoma City Thunder versus Dallas Mavericks. Now it's a matchup between two of the three NBA's uh, MVP finalists Shea Gilgis Alexander for OKC and Luka Doncic for Dallas. I feel like playoff experience is going to come down to who wins this series. That's the reason that um, someone wins this series. So I'm going to take Dallas in seven games. Dallas, I'm going to take Dallas in seven games mainly because of the playoff experience. Yes, Shea Gilgis Alexander is amazing and he's a very pure scorer. But, you know, Luka Doncic is on another level of amazing. On top of that, he's got Kyrie Irving on his side and some nice um, nice pieces into the team like Daniel Gafford and P.J. Washington. I got Dallas in seven games here. For the 2-3 matchup, this is probably going to be the best playoff series. The best playoff series of the whole playoffs. The Denver Nuggets versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, these two teams split their matchups 2-2 two two in the regular season. But... Yes, Denver is going for the repeat. They're going for back-to-back after winning their first ever championship last year. But I am going to go with Minnesota here in six games. Six games over Denver. Yes, I know Denver is stacked. You know, you got MVP finalist and probably likely the MVP, Nikola Jokic, who's already won two MVPs and won finals MVP last year. And then you got some great pieces around him like Jamal Murray, very pure scorer, Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr., uh, Christian Brown, and Kentavious Caldwell Pope. But ultimately, I think Minnesota's defense is going to take over in that series, which is why I have them going in six games. On to the East, we have the Boston Celtics versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. I feel like Cleveland is going to give Boston a run for their money. But I'm going to take Boston in six, mainly because of how stacked their team is. Like, like I said earlier, you know, you got Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Kristaps Porzingis, and Drew Holiday on the team, on the same team, and it amounted to 64 wins, which is just crazy. So I'm going to take Boston in six games. They, they were also one of the best home teams in the league this year. Well, no, they were the best team, sorry. They've only lost four games at home this year. Three in the Western Conference teams. One of them to only one of them to an Eastern Conference team, which was the Knicks. So, I think Boston will just take the first two. Cleveland takes the next two, and then Boston will take the next two again. For the other Eastern Conference series, it's the Indiana Pacers versus the New York Knicks. This team, these two teams have history. These two teams have have some history. They've matched up a lot. In the late 90s and the early 2000s. They even matched up as of recently in 2013. With the um, with the Patrick Ewing for the Knicks. Reggie Miller for the Pacers matchups back then. And then they met. Re- like I said they met recently in 2013. With Carmelo Anthony for the Pacers. Or Carmelo Anthony for the Knicks. Paul George for the Pacers. So this team's got some history. But I'm going to take the Knicks here. I'm going to take the Knicks in six games. I feel like the Pacers... League leading scoring and field goal efficiency is what's going to keep them in this series. But ultimately, I'm going to take the Knicks in six games just because I feel like they have an amazing roster around them. 
Now on to the conference finals. The conference finals. The Western Conference Finals. It's a very interesting one. Very interesting one. You got the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Dallas Mavericks. Now, keep in mind. Like I said, Minnesota has some very good defense. Very, very good defense. Best efficiency in the league at 108.4 defensive rating. They even have Defensive Player of the Year finalist Rudy Gobert, who has won three Defensive Player of the Year awards in the past. So he's perfectly capable of being an amazing defensive player. He had a down year last year, but has rebounded. So, but you got defense against offense. So, who who do we got taking this one? For me, I am going to take Minnesota in six. I got Minnesota going in six. They got, I'm going to say they, they take game one at home, but then Dallas takes game two in Minnesota. But then Minnesota rebounds, takes a win in Dallas, Dallas takes one at home, and then Minnesota takes the last two games. Going to their first ever NBA Finals ever. Uh, also, as of recently, 2022, the NBA has uh, implemented a Conference Finals MVP award. Steph Curry was the first one to win it for the West, and then Nikola Jokic last year. So, the third winner of the Western Conference Finals MVP will be Anthony Edwards. That is what my prediction is. For the East, the Boston Celtics versus the New York Knicks. Just like the Knicks with the Pacers, they have tons of history with the Celtics. A bunch of matchups in the 60s, 70s. Uh, this is very... This is going to be... This arguably, this one could be the best matchup of the whole playoffs. This could be, but... Um, you know, who, who knows how it's going to go. I will take the New York Knicks in seven games. I got New York going into Boston game seven and winning in Boston in game seven in front of the Boston Garden crowd. I got the home team winning every single game of this series up until the next win game seven in Boston. It's a very bold prediction, but I stand by it. Jalen Brunson will win the Eastern Conference Finals MVP being only the third player to do so after Jason Tatum in 2022 and Jimmy Butler last year. Now that will set up a NBA Finals of the Minnesota Timberwolves and the New York Knicks. It's a very, very, very random NBA Finals, but I feel like it's going to be very interesting. Before I go over this one, I'm going to go over some league leaders real quick just to recap. So obviously we know Luka Doncic for the Dallas Mavericks led the league in scoring with just a tad under 33 or 34 points per game, just a tad under that. Domantas Sabonis for the Sacramento Kings led the league with 13.7 rebounds per game. Sadly, they missed, well, not sadly for me, I hate the Kings, but they missed the playoffs after losing the second playing game to New Orleans for that eighth, for that eighth seed. But um, Sabonis is a very good player. He's a very good player. And he should have been voted all-star uh, selection this year, but he wasn't, which is still mind-boggling. I still think he'll get an All-NBA award, but that doesn't make up for it as much. Tyrese Halliburton, as I mentioned, led the league with assist at 10.9, so just a tad under 11. But um, he was a very good guard this year. He had, uh, I think, two or three of the games with most assist by a player this year. Which was we're in the twenties. I know that. I can't remember which one, how much exactly, but he was a very good playmaker this year. Very good playmaker. He did miss some time with injury, so that does hurt his award chances. Because the NBA implemented a rule where you have to play, I think, a minimum sixty-five games to qualify for awards, and I think he missed more than than um, the four, the uh, sixteen games allowed. So um, sucks, but you know he's still a great guard. He's still a great guard. And then, obviously, I mentioned the Minnesota Timberwolves' best defensive rating at 108.4. And then, a very underrated look is the Oklahoma City Thunder. They led the league in both steals per game at 8.5 a game and blocks at 6.6. Now, to be fair, they tied these league leads. They tied the Sixers in steals, and they tied the Celtics in blocks. So, they're not very much at the top, but they pretty much are. Um... Now, speaking of the Celtics, 
you know, like I said at the beginning of this, uh, when I mentioned the seeding, it's championship or bust for them. Because if they don't win it after multiple years of coming up short uh, again and again, you know, they could possibly be a very different team after the year if they don't win the championship. Now, obviously, if you win the championship, you're like, okay, I don't care what happens, which, um, and, you know, that's what every sports fan says. You know, if, I, if, we, if my team just wins the championship, I do not care. That's what the Celtics are setting out to do. But, as I predicted, I got the Knicks going to the finals. Um, anyway. As, oh, yes, yes, yes. So, on, on top of, before I do my finals predictions. Uh, one more thing to talk about. I mentioned earlier the Phoenix Suns. Or did I mention? I'm not sure. But the Phoenix Suns, they're looking for... They're also looking for championship or bust. You know, same thing as the Celtics. But the Suns for the last couple of years, they, they were very mediocre and terrible between 2010 and 2020. But in 2021 is when they really gave their fans hope again with an NBA Finals run in 2021, but have since come up short. They won 64 games in 2022, but lost in the second round to Luka and the Mavs. And then last year, they lost in the second round in the cusp of Denver's championship run in six games. Now, when you have players like Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, as well as trading for Bradley Beal and having the league's leading uh, uh, three-point shooter in Grayson Allen, and a very nice center, uh, Yusuf Nurkic, who has the NBA high in rebounds in a game at 30 this year, you would think to, you would think to finish with at least 50 wins. You would think they would finish at least 50 wins, but they didn't. But, you know, it's not all on them. It's more on just how the Western Conference was really, really tough this year. Because to think the first, the top three seeds in the West finished with at least 56 wins. And then Phoenix, they were the sixth seed. They finished with 49, which is just under LA and Dallas when they when LA had 51 and Dallas had 50. They did tie New Orleans for that six seed, but they have the nod over them because of head-to-head matchups, which is what propelled uh, New Orleans to that seventh seed in the play-in. They lost to LA in the play-in, but then won versus Sacramento, who beat my Warriors. I, I am a Warriors fan, so it, it made me very upset that we lost the play-in game, but it made me very happy uh, loss directly after. Um, but with the East, it was it was very weak. It was very weak. Besides Boston, only New York managed 50 wins. They managed 50 exactly. So there's a 14-game difference between the Eastern 1 seed and the Eastern 2 seed. For better context, there was an 11-game difference between the West 1 seed and the West 10 seed. That's how stacked the West was this year. And... But there was, a, there was a big difference in between. There was a five-game split between the Western 3 seed and the Western 4 seed. So, But <laughs> but between the Eastern 1 seed and the Eastern 10 seed, there was a 28-game difference, which is insane. Two of the teams, the bottom two teams in the play-in for the East were below 500, so like, it was pretty weak. Anyway, enough chit-chat. For the NBA Finals... It's the game one will be at Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I got Minnesota taking game one. They're going to take game one of the series at home in their first ever final series, finals game. I got them taking game one. In game two, I also got them taking game two. You know, they have a very, their, their defense is going to carry them, as well as the scoring of Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns. As well as some other role players like Nikhil Alexander Walker and Jaden McDaniels. But it will mostly be just the defense. Like it's done all year. Like it's done all year. Heading back to New York for game three. I got New York taking game three. You know, it's not going to be a clean sweep. But, you know, in front of a Madison Square Garden crowd that has not seen a finals game since 1999. They're gonna they're gonna come out popping. They're gonna come out screaming, which is why I got them taking this game taking games three and game four. I, the New York will tie the series two to two. Now, under now under all the pressure from Minnesota, you go to New York 
You let the series get tied 2-2. Two two. You go back home. What do you do? Well, you dominate. I got Minnesota taking game 5 back home. But the Knicks will not go down like that. They will head back home to Madison Square Garden and win game 6. Setting up the first NBA Finals game 7 since 2016 where uh, I have bad memories of that. My Warriors lost with uh, lost to Cleveland in game 7 at home in 2016. Backpacked by a 73 win season. It was it was horrible. But at least they won three more championships after that. So going into game seven. Minnesota versus New York. In Minnesota, a raucous crowd at Target Center. Your NBA champion will be the Minnesota Timberwolves in seven games. A very successful season. Leads up to their first ever NBA championship. And your finals MVP will be Anthony Edwards. There's And it will not be a very close vote. Well, I mean, it kind of will, but at the end, I got Anthony Edwards winning finals MVP. And the Timberwolves taking home their first ever NBA championship. After years and years and years and years of mediocrity, after their very close championship um, loss in 2004 in the Western Conference Finals to the LA Lakers, they finally rebound, and it's time they take it home. Now, that is going to be the end of it. I hope people agree with these predictions. They're, I mean, no, nobody probably will, but that is what I think is going to happen for the NBA playoffs. I'll, I'll throw in just to, just to uh, for um, a qu- for a quick context. I might as well throw in some award winners because why not? For MVP, I'm gonna take Luka Doncic. He's due for an MVP, and I think he's gonna get it for sure. For uh, sixth man of the year. I'm going to take Malik Monk. As much as I hate Malik Monk with a passion, he has been really good. So I'll take him. NBA Rookie of the Year, it's not even close. It's uh, Spurs Superstar Center, the French center, Victor Wembanyama. Dude was on a tear this year. Um, Same thing with Defensive Player of the Year. I'm going to take Victor for Defensive Player of the Year. And then Most Improved Player, I will take Kobe White for the Chicago Bulls. He's been balling. And then the NBA just implemented a clutch player of the year but I gotta take my guy Steph Curry I'll bet bro's been clutch all year he beat the not clutch allegations I've seen on social media so I'm gonna take him for that and then coach of the year I mean two of these coaches I have no idea who they are the um uh Jamal Mosley for the magic and then Mark Diagnia I don't know how to say this guy's name for um the Oklahoma City Thunder so I'm gonna take Chris Finch for coach of the year as well um that is pretty much it. So I hope you all enjoyed this. This um, this uh, NBA playoff prediction. Hopefully, <laughs> I might make another one of these podcasts after the NBA Finals is over. Based off, like, if I was correct or not. But uh, we'll see how accurate or how inaccurate I am after this. So, um... Thank you, thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys later. This is Alex from Lavos signing out.